In the final lecture of this unit, we will present a prefix 3 code which is of optimal average length. And this code is the Huffman code uh, named after its inventor Huffman. Okay. So what is Huffman code? Uh, let's take an example to describe Huffman code. And uh, we have already seen uh, we have already seen Shannon codes and we have already seen how they perform. Let's perhaps uh, take a slightly different distribution. So once again, we have this alphabet X and this is the distribution P for X. And suppose A has probability 1 by 8, B has probability 1 by 4. Actually, let's just take the same distribution. So, right. so what was it? that we saw last time a b c d there was an alphabet with four symbols and the probabilities were half 1 by 4 1 by 8 1 by 8 and we wanted to find a code for it and 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 we gave shannon code and indeed that code is optimal because uh, we saw that it attains it attains the uh, it attains the entropy lower bound okay so for that particular example, Shannon code was optimal. But in general, whenever because you will round off the lens, you will not attain entropy and it is unclear if the resulting average length will be optimal. We know it will be within one bit of the lower bound, but it may not be precisely optimal. Huffman code, on the other hand, we will see is exactly optimal. No prefix free code can do better than Huffman code. Uh, Note that I'm not claiming that Huffman code will attain the entropy lower bound. Its average length need not be entropy, but whatever that average length is, that's the best one can do with prefix free codes. That's the claim. So to motivate Huffman code, let's start with this example. So consider these four symbols with probabilities half, one fourth, one eighth, and one eighth. Now the idea of Huffman code is, uh, is to, Huffman code firstly is an algorithm for constructing a code. And the idea is to uh, go with a heuristic that symbols with least probability must be assigned the smallest, uh, the longest uh, length code words. And symbols with smallest probability must be assigned the smallest length code words. So in this case, uh, we have already arranged the symbols in decreasing order of probability. And now we take the ones with the least probability, which are these symbols? These are these two symbols. So these are symbols with least probability okay so these two symbols which have the least probability we will use a tree code construction will be the ones with uh will will want, want will assign the longest code words to them and code words are as we discussed three uh, leaves of this tree so we just imagine these two leaves to which these two code uh, these two symbols will be assigned for code word. So this is D for C, this is D for D. And we start making our tree bottom up. Okay. So this one will let's say be 0 and this one be 1. Now, now there is this new intermediate symbol which represents uh, either C or D. This is a fictitious symbol, it doesn't exist here. So I'll just name it C, comma D. It's a fictitious symbol and now what we do is we essentially repeat this process where we imagine uh, this as a single symbol. So what are the new symbols now? Symbol A has probability half. So I'll just name these steps. This is step one. Actually, there was step zero where I arranged them in decreasing order. So the symbol A is probability half. Symbol B has probability one fourth. And this new symbol which comes up now, symbol C comma D have, has probability one fourth. So again, in step two, we look for two symbols, two least probability symbols. So which are these two symbols now? Now these are these two symbols here. Okay. So in step two, maybe I'll use a different color for the C comma D symbol. Let's say this is that green symbol here. Okay. So in step two, we have the symbol C comma D. And we have the symbol uh, B and we do the same thing again. Yeah. 
so we essentially make again a tree with these two as leaves okay and call this zero call this one and now you have this new symbol new fictitious uh, symbol this one here and this is now the symbol b comma this fictitious symbol c comma d okay so that's the new symbol again you repeat this now now essentially you just have two symbols what are the two symbols that you have left now a which has probability half and this giant fictitious symbol which combines b and c comma d so overall probability of this guy is probability of b plus probability of the c comma d which was one fourth so one fourth plus one fourth is half and now again you are you have a same similar situation so you have this step three again you keep a here and now the other this giant symbol you can keep here so you have b c d okay and this of course you have now exhausted all the symbols so this is the root okay now let me uh, let me unroll this tree that i have formed so what have i done this is the root here i have kept symbol a then here there is some intermediate node this fictitious symbol but here i have kept b and and then there is this another fictitious symbol and here i have kept c t okay so this is huffman's algorithm for creating a prefix free code okay rather elementary but quite interesting by the way huffman i think invented this as a master student so it is not using very heavy math as it should not right it's uh, just very cute and elementary and uh, so so what are the code words let me list down the code words here the first code word is 0 the second code word is 10 third code word is 110 and the fourth code word is 111 uh, if we come it's, it's rather similar to the one we saw earlier but again we see that the lengths that you end up assigning you didn't plan for it uh, like shannon code you didn't assign length in the beginning but length that this algorithm yields this is one this is two this is three this is three so it's exactly the shannon length by the way which is optimal for this case because the probabilities are all powers of two log one by px are integers so so huffman code retains whatever the performance of Shannon code was for this example uh, but in general it can even outperform Shannon code and will always be optimal okay so this we just use this example to describe a general procedure but let me now describe the procedure in abstract okay so here is we can call this thing the Huffman algorithm So the first step in this algorithm, the first step before you do anything else is to uh, yeah, we'll just do this procedure recursively. So what is the input for this algorithm? The input for the algorithm is the source distribution P, P1 to Pm, suppose there are M symbols. And the output for this algorithm are is the Huffman code C, which assigns these code words C1 to Cm to all the probabilities. Okay. So first step, this is just so that we know uh, we, we know that at the end we'll associate with each symbol a leaf node so we'll just have this empty leaf node in the beginning associate with each symbol x in in this case x takes values in the set 1 to m or abc there abcd there a leaf node so just basically make so here the way I'm describing it, we already make these leaf nodes, uh, one for A, one for B, one for C, one for D, and now we'll figure out how to connect them. So just, uh, this is just some semantic thing. So we associate with each symbol a leaf node. Now, the second step, 
this is the recursive step while m is greater than or equal to 2 you repeat the following okay so as long as you have more than two symbols you keep on repeating it so what does this step uh, what do we do here if m equals to 2 essentially there are two symbols left very easy you can stop assign the two symbols as the left and the right child of the root okay this is basically the stopping uh, step this last step here but the in algorithm i'm uh, defining it in a particular way okay I'm, I'm presenting it in a way that so that you can code it directly so so you take this root and you assign them as left and right symbol this is this last step okay if there are two symbols left no problem you can just do that okay so this if this holds then you do this okay and th this is basically it stops the algorithm stops here okay. and uh, otherwise otherwise what do you do Else we sort the probabilities. So at every step here, we were supposed to sort the probabilities. I was doing it implicitly. I was sorting them for this new symbol. But yeah, you have to sort them. Imagine when there are a million symbols and you have to sort these probabilities. You will have no clue which is larger, which is smaller. Probabilities in a decreasing or maybe in a non-increasing order okay so what do we assume so we'll have a notation for these sorted guys so let p1 p2 pm actually we don't, I don't need to bring in more notation sorry about this so we just assume that they are sorted huh? so, so let p1 pm this, this represents sorted probabilities be the sorted probabilities okay so, so now we have sorted the probabilities okay. so else we do the following a uh, the next step once you have sorted the probabilities is assign the m minus 1th and the mth so, so the last and the second last smallest probability symbols symbols as the left and the right child of a node okay so now we treat so, so this is this this is the step where we do this assignment now in the subsequent steps we'll treat this new node treat this node and everything that is below it remember Although I'm writing it as a node, but but th th there is this entire subtree below it, right? Which I'm collapsing into this green thing here. So treat this node and its subtree as the left and the right child. right child the left and the right child treat 
this node in sub three. Sorry, what am I writing? I completely lost. Sorry about this. So 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 yeah. So so this is the new um, node, and we have added these two things to it. And so 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 this will at this point look like this new node, and two of its things, uh, sub two of its children. And of course, these children may already be encoding or encapsulating uh, bigger subtrees, okay, from previous step. So that's why I'm calling it a subtree here. Subtree is a part of a tree, which is also a tree. As a new symbol, which occurs. With probability it occurs with probability uh, P M minus one plus P M. Okay, yeah, just like this example here where we were combining the probability of these two symbols we have combined it here so what has happened because of this the size of the problem is reduced by one okay so this is a new symbol and now we can again associate a leaf with it and repeat so now we update so we have a smaller problem now we update m becomes m minus 1 and this p the original distribution p that we had the pmf becomes p1 to pm minus 2 and then just one more symbol m minus 1 plus pm so this is basically a recursive program which keeps on uh, which keeps on, I mean, this is just an iteration here, sorry. So yeah, it keeps on reducing the size of the problem and it will stop when the size reduces to two because at that point you can actually assign two symbols and be done with it, okay? So that's the algorithm. And uh, now you have to come, we, we know how, so you get a three, you know how to generate a code out of the tree. And anyway, for completeness, I'll write it. Generate a binary code. by associating paths from parents to left children with a zero and right children with a one okay so we associate this and then we look at paths from root to leaf nodes those are your final code it's just like here so zero one zero one and then just look at the path from root to the leaf node okay so this is the formal algorithm but uh, it's best understood by working out examples it's not difficult and in fact you can code you can you can implement it This, I guess Huffman algorithm is used uh, quite commonly as an exercise in teaching data structures uh, because you you get to learn how to represent data on a graph uh, when you implement Huffman uh, algorithm. It can also be used to teach. Uh, I think yeah, some 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 there are at least I have seen some versions where it is uh, used to teach uh, linked lists and pointers. But anyway, I mean, the, the, you, you, this is a simple enough algorithm. You can try to implement it. I, I suggest that uh, if you if you want to work in compression, I, I know that some of you are already working in compression professionally. Uh, I'm sure you you can try to implement this on Python. All right. So this is the Huffman algorithm in this very basic form. Now. Uh, 
there are various ways to represent this. Uh, here I was representing it using these trees and you have to draw these trees again and again. Uh, you can you can also represent it in one line. In my notes I tell you how to represent it in one line. Uh, that method is useful if if you don't want trees and don't if you don't want to draw trees again and again. But anyway, yeah, these are all small remarks. Fine, so the algorithm is clear. But why is this algorithm optimal? Okay. Or, uh, so we claim upfront that this is the optimal algorithm. So why is it so? So that's the main theorem of this class. Okay, so this is this main theorem. Although I will not prove it completely. So a uh, Huffman code. Okay, so why am I calling it a Huffman code? Why not the Huffman code? What are the options that we have here? Well, at every step, when you see symbols with two equal probability, or with equal probability like this one, you have the option to swap them. Okay, you can either assign B to as a left child or C D as a right child or vice versa. Both those codes will be of optimal length. And so there's no unique Huffman code, there can be multiple Huffman codes. Okay, but any of them, a Huffman code, a Huffman code has the minimum average length among all prefix free codes. Okay. So that is this quantity L bar P X that you were looking for is equal to average equal to. So, so there are these real results where we have exact equality typically we have upper and lower bound which are close equal to average length of the Huffman code okay that's the statement so this is the optimal code uh, I will not give the complete proof. Let me just give a proof sketch. Okay, the proof is not difficult, but uh, yeah, but I'm not giving too many proofs in this course. It looks like I'm giving a lot of proofs and I'm doing a lot of maths, but actually I'm being quite informal. Uh, yeah. But I'm trying to express the main ideas. Okay, so first observation that we make in this proof uh, in this uh, proof. We just call it observation one. Actually, this is the only observation. And I, I'm just stating it without proof. There exists, so you can find. Actually, there exists and you can find may not be the same statement. Uh, because you can find means you can find it efficiently using a nice algorithm. So that's why we just use there exists. A uh, prefix free code of optimal length which assigns the two symbols. with least probability to two longest code words of length L max with the first L max minus one bits 
the same. Okay, so what does the statement mean? So, uh, what we are claiming here is there can be many prefix free codes which are optimal, but we can always find a prefix free code of optimal length which assigns two symbols with least probability. So, take two symbols with the smallest probability. This one, any two symbols with smallest it assigns the I'm, say, I'm saying the here, but if there are multiple, you can choose any uh, with least probability to two longest code words of length L max. Okay, and that's one condition. And the second condition is that the first L max minus one bits are exactly the same. We can always find such a code. That's the claim here. Uh, if not, so, so I'm not proving it, but it's easy to see. If not, then the uh, so first claim is yes, the longest code word must be assigned to the shortest, uh, the least probability symbol. If not, you can take a symbol which has been assigned the longest code word and take any other symbol uh, and then take a symbol of least probability and interchange their code words. And this will always improve the average length. So first observation is that first observation is this first part that this longest code word must be assigned to a symbol with least probability. Okay, now you now you uh, and going this way as we have seen earlier also, uh, the optimal code will assign the two longest code words of length L max to the symbols with two smallest probabilities. Now, suppose the second condition does not hold. Suppose that these two sequences do not have the first uh, bits co common. Okay, so that's where you have to make some shifts, uh, reassign the code words to claim to get to this claim. That's the part here. The, pa the, 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 the claim here is that you can always find an assignment where if you take uh, in our notation, the two symbols with smallest probability are M and M minus uh, one M. They will always have code words of this form, common till this point, and then differ only in the last one. Okay, you can always find such an assignment. Okay, so suppose, uh, so let's agree with that. You can think about it, and I, I, I think you will agree with that if you think about it a little. Okay. So once this is done, now what happens is, uh, now we'll write a proof. The proof will be by induction. So let proof by induction, assuming this first observation, which, which you have to prove. So by induction, um, the claim is true for m equal to 2. Of course, the Huffman code for m equal to 2 is optimal one. You can check that. So when you just have two symbols. Now, suppose the claim is true for m minus 1. So what does it mean? So let L H, let me just denote by L H P one to P M. This is defined as the average length of Huffman code for P equal to P one to P M. So by induction hypothesis, we assume that the claim holds for, uh, so this P is the prefix P, this P, the distribution P. So we assume this holds for every every distribution. Huffman code is optimal if there are M minus one symbol. This, uh, this is the induction hypothesis. And as any proof by induction, now we'll show that the same claim must hold for M as well, if this holds, and we'll use this observation. Okay, so if you look at the construction of Huffman code, this last two symbols, so now, now we look at this L of L bar P, the smallest length of the code for M symbols. And if you look at the, so, the, so this, this of course is less than equal to this because Huffman code is a specific code, so must be less than equal to this. But if you look at the construction for Huffman code, I don't know why I'm using half of my screen. Maybe I'll zoom in. So 
so yeah if you if you look at the construction for huffman code this is equal to these these two symbols will be assigned the last mega symbol and then they'll be combined into a single symbol we'll treat that as a single symbol and you will basically be constructing a Huffman code for the combined distribution now where this last symbol has probability pm minus 1 plus pm okay but the actual code words have length exactly one more than this and this happens with probability this much okay so with this probability you will have length one, exactly one more than this so this is some some observation you can make that this is from the construction of Huffman code. So this is one direction. Okay, but we by our induction hypothesis we already claim that if you have m minus one symbols then this Huffman code is optimal. So this guy is exactly equal to this with one symbol less, right? So this is equality here and uh, okay now we will claim the inequality in the other direction so on the other hand by observation 1 there is indeed an optimal code where these two symbols are assigned to the longest length and all the things before them are common or, or all the things before the last bits are common between their representation. Therefore, you can verify that this for that particular code, that particular optimal code, this must be equal to plus the length for the combined guys because because the sequence before that is common so that will constitute a prefix free code for the reduced part uh, but the combined combined guy can only have probability more than the best prefix free code and so this is the inequality in the other direction right so l bar is less than this and it's greater than this Oh, sorry, should have this plus this uses observation one. So, and this part uses the construction of Huffman code. So, L bar is less than this and greater than this, and this can only happen if both these bounds match. Uh, this can only happen if everything is equal in the middle, and which means this guy here must be equal to L bar combining these two bounds. This is by combining okay. okay, and that's the proof. So we've used this observation one. Uh, I think this this part will be clear what we have used here. Here we've used the structure of Huffman code. Here we have used observation one. So what observation one says is that there is an optimal code. Of course, it's an optimal code, so its average length is this much which will have this common sequence on the top and then it will have one symbol for m minus one going through zero let's say and one for m that's the observation one okay if you look at this particular code and if you look at this last two code words truncated here the common part you can verify that that constitutes a prefix free code for the reduced source this particular one where the symbols have probability p1 p2 pm uh, pm minus two and this last symbol has probability pm minus 1 plus pm it's a prefix free code for that and therefore the average length of this reduced prefix free code must be greater than the average length of the best prefix free code for this smaller uh, source however the actual length of this code is only this much more than the average length of the same code for the reduced prefix free code and that's how you get this inequality Okay. You have to think about it. It's an elementary proof, but you have to think why, why this claim holds. And once you have these two inequalities, then you have the same upper and lower bound 
and so everything so this is greater than this which is greater than this which is again less than this so everything in the middle must be equal which means this must be equal to this okay so that's the proof okay so in summary what so this is the last lecture in unit um in, in unit uh, uh unit 9 and what we have seen in this unit is we formulated a problem of variable length quotes and uh, then we showed that even if you allow error the average length of a variable length code cannot be much smaller than entropy of x then we shifted our focus to prefix free codes and we established graphs inequality which in particular told us that the problem of constructing a prefix free code um, can be can, can be reduced to the problem of finding sequences of lengths which satisfy graphs inequality and from that we came up with a very simple strategy for constructing this op almost optimal prefix free codes with average length uh, roughly entropy which uh, yeah which which which, which could have uh, the op those shannon co uh, those codes were called shannon codes and they could either be represented on a graph or using intervals and finally we found the optimal prefix free code which is this huffman code which is described by an algorithm and it's quite implementable and here is the claim that Huffman code always has the optimal length note that this can be greater than equal to this can only be greater than equal to hx because we know that this guy is greater than equal to hx but it need not be equal to hx okay it it coincides with hx only if all the probabilities are uh, of the form 2 to the power minus l for some int integer l. Okay. this is what i wanted to say this week uh, we'll continue with compression um, in the next sorry this is what i wanted to say in this unit i think i have more lectures coming in this week so so this is the end of unit 9 but we'll continue with our discussion on compression even in unit 10 and uh, in particular in unit 10 we'll start looking at problems of universal compression which is till, till now we have assumed that you know this distribution p and that model has been given to you but that's not how things work in practice you just have a sequence of symbols and you have to compress that sequence so there is no model no probability p given to you so we will look at some theory of universal compression and try to bring out the basic ideas even here we only brought out the basic idea this huffman code in its elementary form or shannon code with two representation as a tree or an interval it is very close to what is done in practice but it's not exactly what is done in practice compression as a field has uh, theoretical foundations as well as a lot of engineering innovations which have gone into it but but the theoretical underpinnings of those uh, innovations were covered in these lectures okay so see you in the next uh, lecture where we will start with universal compression